All right, so last night or night before last. Night before last. Night before last, uh-huh. we watched Shut In. Um, and this is the second film from The Daily Wire, which they had made a movie called Run, Fight, Hide. Um, and, you know, because everything's politicized these days and everyone thinks everyone has an agenda and this and then I totally understand to a degree why people would think that with that movie. Um, I liked that movie. So there's no bias here. Like I'm totally open to whatever when it comes to film, like make the film you want. And if it's enjoyable to me, I don't give a shit who produced it or whatever. It, it, it's the movie I judge. It's the movie I care about. And I did like that movie and I, and I had uh, good things to say about it. In my review, I, I had a good time. I didn't think it was fantastic or anything, but I was like, yeah, this is, this is watchable. This is good. You know? So when I saw that this was another one, uh, produced by them. I was like, oh, here we go again. There's going to be people who are blowing and praising it because it is that and they're on that side of that political spectrum and they want to make sure that they support their agenda and all that shit. And then there's going to be people who hate that side of the coin and are like obligated to hate the movie, which is just yeah. so dumb. Just watch the movie for what it is or don't watch the movie. You know? Yeah. If you, if you don't want to support it, don't watch it. That's how you support it is by watching it, paying for it and talking about it. <laughs> that is, there is no such thing as bad, you know, press as they say, yeah. right? You're either sure. talking about it or you're not talking about it. As much as you bitch about it, I reviewed a movie called Death House on here and it probably got more views for it than it ever should have gotten in a million years because of how much I hated the movie. I had people in the comments and I told them 50 fucking times in the review, don't watch this movie. Mm-hmm. Don't do it. I know you're intrigued and you want to go watch it to see what I'm talking about, but please don't. And so many comments were, I'm going to go watch it. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah. you're like, no, you can't, you know? So anyways, yeah. so this one is about a woman who is trying to raise her two sons after getting over her drug addiction. Her husband is still into drugs. And she's trying to figure things out, make a life for herself um, after her rehabilitation. And she is currently at her mom's house that I guess was left to her after her mom died. And um, she's just trying to figure out what to do. And she's broke and um, she has absolutely no help. And um, she ends up getting locked in the pantry um and uh, most of the movie takes place with her locked in there mm-hmm. and sure. uh her kids are not in there with her and there's threats outside uh of that pantry w- in, within the house that she has to deal with while locked in the pantry yeah that's as much as i'll say on it um okay so overall i didn't like the movie but I do like things about it. And and here's something I want to say really quick before we get into it. I was really trying to ask myself this question throughout. Because there is a lot of like in your face religious stuff in here. And that's yeah. to be expected with who produced it. So they can be influential to the kind of movies. But why wouldn't they produce a film that they obviously want to Sure. stand behind the message of right yeah. that's the the more guns in school thing is the run <laughs> fight hide like you know the the answer to guns is more guns right so of course they're gonna they're gonna go down that direction because that's their fucking uh that's their belief that's their ideology yeah within this one of course as we get to the other thing it's is with that side of the coin there's uh two of the biggest things that you deal with is guns and god right mm. um so this one really hits on you know, you can't get over your addiction without God. Yeah. Um, which is fine. If that's what you believe, I don't care about any of that. So what I was really trying to do was I was trying to say, like, is my biases with me not being a religious person getting in the way of me liking this film? And I can honestly say no. Um I didn't like the heavy-handed stuff, but there's plenty of stuff like that 
that's in film that other people don't agree with, right? And and you have to disconnect from your bias yeah. in order to enjoy the film for what it is, whatever that message is. There's plenty of movies that I watch where the person is super religious and this and that. And whether that's an agenda or not, I don't know. But that's what the film is trying to convey. And within this, because you have to think like, this character is religious. Right. And she does feel like Jesus and God is, and the Bible are helping her through this. Mm -hmm. So that's, I feel like our bias towards it is seeing it as more in your face and if you were somebody who was religious and was a Jesus person and was the person that's like, you do need God to get over drugs and all that, you wouldn't see it as heavy handed. You'd right. see it as truth. You'd see it as like, yeah, see, Absolutely. like that's a, so yeah. I don't know. It's I'm trying to... to disconnect my yeah. biases from it, but the heavy handed Jesus stuff is not my problem with the film. My problem with the film is this lack of of sense of urgency yeah. from the girl that's locked in with everything going on within this film. There's so many moments where she's just kind of lackadaisically hanging out in that room and slowly kind of doing the things she's trying to do to try to get out of there with what's happening in the film. Her necessity to get out of that room is so fucking dire. It is so, like, she needs to get this done. Right. Now. It should not be Not two minutes. She has a toddler that she is not caring for, and there's threats. She needs out of that room in two minutes. She doesn't need out of that room in a week. No, right? she should be a lot more frantic for what the situation is. But we talked about it, like, after the movie. I think that some of it is supposed to be, like, her ups and downs with, like, you know, feeling like she's... She's hitting rock bottom again kind of a thing. So there is a bit of like, should I just give up? Um, which, but I agree with you. Ultimately, I think she should have been way more urgent with trying to get out of the room. Because if I was in that situation, I think there would have been nothing that would have stopped me from like getting out. Even if the door is super thick. Like, there's plenty of, anyway, but yeah. The Jesus stuff to me. I, I, it, I'm fine. I, I don't really care one way or the other. Like, if you watch St. Maud, there's so much religious stuff being thrown in your face. And I feel like the reason we attach ourselves to it in the way that we do is because it's religion and kind of a negative spin sure. on the effects that it can have yeah. on people and, the, and kind of the belief that we hold that religion is usually more used as a negative Versus yeah. a positive. But it, like you were so. saying, though, if you're somebody who believes in it, this film is probably a really beautiful, like, um, like bolstering of your faith. And the those parts, sure. Right. But not the lack of urgency no. in the girl. No. That's where I feel like all of us should agree. Yeah. Right. We can disagree on the religious aspects. If that works for you, great. I didn't honestly care. I saw it and was rolling my eyes so to speak I was just kind of like okay that's where they're going with this fine that's that character that character's religious that character has God help her through this that's fine I don't care I'm not bothered by that if that's the whole fucking film if they're constantly being like if you lack faith you're going to hell if you lack faith you're a piece of shit if you lack faith you're never going to be able to get over your addictions any of that this is her journey this is her belief this is how she gets over it. I'm fine with that. This isn't like a one size fits all story. This is specifically for her. So the religious stuff I just cast aside. It's something that I'm not into myself. I got over alcohol without it. I know that you don't need it to recover. So if it works for her, cool. The absolute problem that everybody's going to have with this film. And it's the same. Not everybody. Sorry. That's ridiculous. There's going to be people who love this. Um, because... I was going to mention, we were taught, I compared this very similarly to the movie Till Death with Megan Fox that came out fairly recently, mm-hmm. where you're really watching similar. this and you're like, and I hate to do this. I'm, I'm so not the person. I actually wrote a treatment for a movie I wanted to do specifically on this thing that I can't stand is the whole, 
well, why didn't they just do this? Sure. Right? Yeah. I had a killer in a movie who like stalked a movie theater and the person was like, well, why didn't this person do this? And they take the person and they put them in their situations and they film them and they find out that these people do the same old shit that sure. everyone does because you're scared and you don't know what the fuck you're going to do. And sometimes you just don't think of the obvious thing in the moment. Like yeah. the whole, why did not you just do this? It's such a lame thing to do. That being said, there <laughs> are so many, like, here. why wouldn't she just do yeah. this thing? Yeah. <sighs> that, it, it is. It's so too many it. moments like that where you're, you're just like, and that's the till death too. Yeah. Where I was just like, why would they do this? Why uh -huh. would he do this? It's, oh my God. The thing in the end, the till death ending with what happens and, and the guy and then... <laughs> that was one of the most, why in the fuck would they do that I've ever watched in my life. And I know that sounds like a hyperbolic statement, but it genuinely, I was like angry. Like, come on, how dumb do you think we are? Right? So there's just, and I don't want to give examples away, but let's just say the means in which she's trying to escape the room, she picks the wrong, uh... She picks the wrong area to try to go yeah. through. Yeah. That's the last place you'd want to try to go through. Okay? Walls are pretty thin. <laughs> Let's just say that. Yeah. Getting through, I can get through like this one, not with the movies on it. But any kind of wall like this, I can get through with my bare hands. Especially <laughs> in older houses. But, I, but granted, anyway. she's much smaller than I am. She is. And, and whatnot, but... That's a lot of the film is you just going, oh my God, why is she doing this? Why doesn't she feel like she's trying to get the fuck out of there yeah. faster? Yeah, definitely that. But, you know, overall, I think that the message is a pretty sweet one, um, you know, about how somebody can be in a really awful place in their life and change things for the better, especially, you know, if you have kids and are motivated to do that. So I like that part of the film. I think the ending is nice. And yeah, I like feel the, good. It was feel good ending for sure. I like the um, apple metaphor. Yeah, the apple metaphor. That's all fine. Yeah. That's all but that's fine. Ultimately, yeah, it's the, the urgency. I thought the little, I thought the acting down. in this was good. Yeah, me too. Um, from the main girl, from the little daughter, I thought she oh, was great. She was wonderful. Yeah. yeah. But um, so I, I didn't mean to interrupt you. No, I wasn't. I was I'm cutting sorry. you off. No, I had nothing else to say. I just, just, this is one of those ones I get passionate about and sure. I can't shut my fucking self up. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it's just, you'll know what I mean if you watch it. Um, there, there is just this complete lack of urgency in the situation. And they could have sped this film's timeline up dramatically. This is, this is one of those films that should take place over an hour or two. Mm. It should be pretty much... Like the, like the TV show 24, uh, where it's in real time. We should have saw this in real time and she should have been like, watch the movie buried with Ryan Reynolds where he's buried in a coffin and he's trying to get out and how frantic he is. Cause he knows the lack of time he has before he runs out of oxygen. And so he's like, I've got to get the fuck out of here. This girl there's some of that. I'm not going to say there isn't like where she's like, I need to get out of here. It's just, it's the way she's just so relaxed at certain times. Yeah. Where I'm like, she's supposed the to stakes are so high and she's not matching them. Mm. And I, that, this is not on the actress. This is on the writer and the director. Yeah. A thousand percent. I think the actress gives the exact performance she was asked to give and does a good job. Yeah. It's the director and the writer's job to be like, no, we need to speed this the fuck up. This chick would... Have you ever seen a woman that feel, like thinks her kid is missing? Right. Have you ever seen a woman who thinks their child's in danger? Right. They do not let up. No. They are manic. They are fucking like, I am getting this kid to safety. I don't care who I have to bite, kick, punch, scratch. I am fucking getting my kid right now. Yeah. Not without my daughter, Sally Fields. This is not that film. I just was like, what are you doing, man? Let's get going here already. 
Yeah. No, I agree. There should have been so much more, but I, I think you're right in that it wasn't the actress's fault at all. Yeah. So, anyways, <laughs> that's that on this film. I just was like, the whole time. And, and I'm, I try not to be that person. I really try to see the character and the stuff around them and be like, well, I'm not them. So my supposed reaction that I think I'd have, even though I have no way to prove that, I've never been chased through the woods by a chainsaw-wielding maniac, so I can't really tell you what I'd do in that situation. I think I do know what I'd do. <laughs> Fuck if I know. You know, especially you don't know at what time and what place and what, you know, right. mental state and, and what else has happened to you before and after. Like, there's so many variables at play. It's, it's astronomical. But I so I try always to be, you know... To be unbiased, to take myself out of the equation, my own beliefs and my own desires and what I would do versus what I wouldn't do. But this doesn't feel real to anybody. Mm, yeah. That's just it. it, it it's, it's not believable to any type of person. To me. Maybe you'll watch it and be like, I don't know what the hell you're talking about. I thought everything she did was super realistic. What else was she supposed to do? Sure. Maybe. Maybe. Maybe somebody out there like that. It's not even what, it is kind of what she's doing, but it's the lack of sense of urgency. I know I said that like 10 times, but that's my biggest kish issue. It's the just. Yeah, for sure. It's, uh, yeah, it's like, underwhelming. What are you times. doing? <laughs> get going. Yeah. I get it. People run out of energy and this and that, but no. This movie <laughs> should have been just crazy. What the fuck? I can't, I gotta get out of here. Yeah. Especially when the threat appears. Yes. Then absolutely. it's fucking, it's go time. Yeah, absolutely. She would have just gnawed through that wall. A hundred percent. Just like, Exactly. <laughs> she would have been through that thing like a langolier. <laughs> just gnawing right through the fucking everything. <laughs> so, anyways. All right. Not a recommendation. Two in a row. Two in a row. <laughs> We're very pessimistic these days. All right. Bye. Bye.